Hey guys, what's going on? I'm checking in on this hexagon wine rack that we just made. A lot of you guys asked for plans and I even walked into work last week. Corey, the marketing manager goes, hey, these people want plans, let's hook them up. So, yeah, get on that. Sounds like the tribe has spoken, let's give this a shot. So my name is Mark and I'm from Woodworker Source. It's great to see your smiling face once again. Now we like putting out these videos to help you do better woodworking. So one, I hope you like them. Two, hope you get something out of them. If you ever have questions, just post them and we'll answer, okay? So first I'm gonna throw in a link to a downloadable and free PDF build guide. Now that's just kind of an overview. The details are gonna be right here in this video. Sound like a deal? Let's get started. So here's what we've got, a hexagon shape. And I'm gonna show you how to cut out those joints so they come out perfect every time. And then I'm gonna show you how to glue up this whole monster. It's got six sides, 30 degree angles between each piece. Can be a little unwieldy to deal with. I'll show you how to do it. Now each side is eight inches by eight inches and it's milled from four quarter lumber. So this final thickness is about three quarters of an inch. And then we got these contrasting bottle supports and they're made out of bamboo. I'm gonna show you how to do these neck cutouts and then of course show you how to make this thing fit perfect right inside there. And then I've got these dovetail keys that are reinforcing the joints. Since this is an end grain joint, it needs to be reinforced in some way and I just chose to do dovetail keys. Now if you've actually never done that before, it's pretty simple to do, I'll show you how to do it. I start by gluing up two narrower boards to make a panel that's slightly wider than eight inches. Now you might be wondering, why am I gluing this up? Couldn't I just start with a board that's wide enough? And of course, yes I could. But I actually happen to have these two boards already on hand. They were narrower, but they match pretty good and I like the look, so I just choose to use those and just glue them up. So have you ever seen this trick before? This is pretty cool. I like to use these little clamping bridges to keep the ends of my glue up good and level. The design with that semicircle keeps it from getting glued to the workpiece, but it also forces these boards to stay nice in the line. It's pretty cool. So I leave it in the clamps overnight, and then I plane it smooth, and then rip the panel to eight inches wide. And now we're ready to cut these hexagon sides. Now the trick to this, make a test hexagon to verify that these joints are gonna work and that the size is just right. And there's just two things you're gonna need to set, the angle of your blade and the length of your crosscut. That's it. Now there are probably a dozen ways to help you set that angle on your table saw blade. The way I chose to do it was just make a little gauge out of a piece of hardwood and I held up to my blade, set it, made some test cuts. So that's the angle of the joint. Now the trick to cutting equally sized pieces is to use a stop block. So that's just a small piece of wood clamped right to my rip fence. And I've gotta set my fence right where I need it so the resulting cut gives me the length that I need. Now the next thing we're going for is continuous grain pattern on the outside of this box. This is absolutely maker's choice. It's just what I wanna do, totally optional. You don't have to do it. But if you do like that idea, here's how I did it. Well, the basic trick to this is that you want this outside face facing up as you make that final cut for each piece. So track along with me for a second here. You're gonna make that first side and then the resulting angle on the workpiece is backwards or it's upside down. So you flip the board over and just nibble off that angle. Flip it again to get it oriented properly and then you slide up against the stop block and you make that final cut. Then you repeat those steps to cut each side of this hexagon and you're gonna end up with continuous grain running all the way around. Now with each side cut, we just take some masking tape and we assemble this sucker to see if it all fits together really nicely. Once you're good with that setup, you roll this out to your final workpiece, you're ready to go. With all those pieces cut, you do a dry assembly to see how everything's going. It is pretty unwieldy, so the trick is, is you're gonna use some masking tape to get kind of a loose assembly, and then you take a strap clamp to cinch it all down equally. And then you're gonna cut the bottle supports. Now there are three steps to this. You're gonna cut a work piece that's about twice as wide or twice as high as you want the finished piece to be. So these are inch and a half, and so I started with a blank that was three inches wide. So you cross cut those pieces with a 30 degree angle on one side, and then you hold it inside that dry assembly Hold it right where you want it to go. You take a sharp pencil and you strike a line right where it meets in there. And now I know that's right where I want to make that cut. I'm going to cut just a little bit proud of that line just to be certain. Hold it in there, test that fit, and then I'm going to need to take a nibble or two off on the table saw to get that fit just right. Now 
To make the bottleneck support semicircles, you actually drill a hole and you rip it on the table saw. Now that's why you start with a blank that's about twice as wide as your final piece because you're going to be drilling a full hole. Now what's the magic size? That's a 35 millimeter or inch and three eighths. Either of those, it's going to be a perfect size. That's a use right here. Admittedly, I don't have any clever ideas whatsoever on how to position these holes. Between you and me, I fought with it for probably 30 minutes before I got a position that I liked. Yeah, I'm sure there's a better way to do it than that. If you've got a better way, go ahead and post a comment below. Help me out. So now we're ready to glue up. Now I like to sand the inside faces before gluing this up. Seriously, it is way easier to sand the insides of these pieces before you glue this up because otherwise it's hard to get in there. I also like to tape off the inside corners too. The glue squeeze out is way easier to clean up. Now here's a funny trick to ensure that I glued this thing in the right sequence to keep the grain continuous around this. I took a Sharpie marker and I labeled each one with a number for the sequence. For the glue up, I want to point out a couple of things. First, I laid down a sheet of plastic so I wouldn't risk gluing this sucker to my bench. Second, this is the fastest and cheapest glue spreader you will ever own. Third, I just set the pieces close and then I relied on the strap clamp to bring it all in. And fourth, I clamped in the bottle supports after the strap clamp was tightened down. So immediately after clamping up, I'm gonna take a damp rag and I wipe out the wet glue. Now the tape protects the wood and the damp rag pulls up the glue really quickly. It leaves it nice and clean inside. So use a hand plane and a card scraper to clean up these joints. Now the plane does the bulk of the work, but it will tear a little bit of the grain here and there. So it's the card scraper that's gonna finesse the rest of it nice and smooth. Then cut the back upper support much like the front support. To get the length just right, you just cut one end to 30 degrees, and then you fit it into the project, strike a line with a sharp pencil to mark the second 30 degree angle, cut it a little long on purpose, and then retest the fit to make sure your line is good, and then you make that final cut, sneaking up on it. Then I also cut some little thin strips that I'm gonna screw down to the bottom of the hexagon, and those are gonna cradle the round bottle on that bottom level. On this back support, I knew I wanted the top of it to be the same height as the bottom of the front support, and then I mark where I wanna cut in a slot that's going to cradle the round bottle for that top level. Now I could use a dado blade for this, but I actually don't have one. So I'm gonna use a 24 tooth ripping blade with a flat top tooth. So as I nibble off the area with this blade, the flat tooth leaves a crisp ridge free notch. And with a quick test, you can see how that notch is just gonna cradle the bottle so that it doesn't roll around. So let me show you how to do these dovetail keys. They're pretty much a piece of cake. I use a 14 degree dovetail bit, chuck it up in the router, and set the height to just where I like it. For this, that was just about half an inch. I just eyeballed it while holding the project on the table. And then I set the fence so the cut would be about two inches from the edge of the hex. I clamped the hex to a right angle jig. I found this to be the simplest way to hold the hex while I routed it. That's because I already owned this, right? I didn't have to make anything special. I didn't have to go buy anything. This made plenty of sense. Cutting the dovetail slots goes in one pass. You hold it up against the fence, push it through, and that's it. Reorient the hex, clamp it to the jig, and you do it again for all four corners. And you flip it around so that this edge is up against the fence, and you just repeat those steps. That way you get a dovetail slot here, and you get a dovetail slot there, and you're all set. And now that you've got the slots all cut, now you gotta make some keys that fit right in there. To do that, you're gonna leave your router table set up just the way it is, you're gonna cut some strips of wood. You go rip some strips that are about this dimension, about three quarters of an inch, maybe by an inch or so. And that gives you enough meat to hold on to it as you push it through your router table. Always be sure you cut like two or three more than you're actually going to need just to be certain everything's gonna work out okay. So you set the fence so the bit is just barely sticking out and you route a pass on both sides of your stick to create a fat dovetail. And at this point, the dovetail should be too fat to fit into the slots of the hexagon. Now you make incremental passes on your dovetail strips by moving the fence by maybe 1 32nd of an inch or so. You make a pass, you test the fit, see how it goes, repeat until it's, you get a nice snug fit in there. Now you just cross cut these strips into little chunks about an inch and a half or so, one for each slot that you've routed, 
and glue them in. Of course, you wanna make sure you cut several extra because you never know what's going to happen. Each one fits a little bit differently. They're not perfect, just kind of the way it goes. Make sure you cut a few extra just to be safe. Now you glue them in place and just let them dry. And after they're dry, you use a flush cut saw. Then you just finesse them flush with a low angle block plane and a card scraper. Now you sign relief, you stand back and you admire your project because you are ready to finish. Now I set up a whole separate video on how to do that using de-wax shellac and satin spray lacquer. Hope you like that. Go check that out. Thanks for watching. Hey, one more thing. If you do end up making this project, please take a picture of it, post it on Instagram, and tag us, Woodworker Source. We'd love to see it. Thanks.